In this video, we're going to look at the settings found in the Octane camera tag when rendering with Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this scene, I'm using the RV ship 01.c4d scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Objects menu. Let's add a new Octane camera. So you can see we've added a new camera here called Octane Camera, and it has an Octane tag. I'll close this for a second. Now you can turn any camera that already exists in your scene into an Octane Camera simply by selecting it and choosing Tags, Cinema 4D, Octane Camera Tag. Let's take a look uh, through this camera. I'm going to zoom in here. Make sure that we're actually looking through the right camera. Use camera, yes, camera one. So there we go. Look at through camera one. The other thing I want to do is I want to add a light in here. So I'm going to choose Octane Dialog Objects. We'll just use a Octane Area Light. I'm going to bring this forward. Make sure it's facing the right direction. We're going to live viewer. Let's do a render here. Okay, so let's rotate it around the other direction. And make it kind of a thin light. And just pick a nice view. And then I'm going to select my Octane Sky, and let's rotate this around. There we go. Something a little bit more dramatic. Okay. So I'm going to select the Octane camera tag associated with this camera. Let's make sure we're looking through the right camera. I'm going to use Octane camera. So let's go in here. There you go, something like that'll work. Okay, now we've got the right camera. Select that Octane camera tag. Otherwise, if we adjust these settings, we're not going to see anything update in here, and that's going to be kind of confusing. So down here, the type of camera that we're using is thin lens. So we have several different camera types of thin lens, panoramic, baking, and OSL. And we're going to cover these in different movies. Uh, but panoramic allows you to render out panoramic if you're doing like VR. You can even do stereo panoramics and so on. Baking allows you to bake the lighting into textures. And OSL is open shading language camera. So we'll talk about that later. Let's go back to thin lens and just talk about these settings down here. So thin lens camera just means like, think of it as like a movie camera or a DSLR or something like that. It's just rendering our scenes as you normally would think they would. Uh, if we go down here to aperture, let's say we want to add some depth of field blurring to the scene. I can start to raise the aperture to add some depth of field. In fact, let's bring it up to something dramatic like 50. Uh, so you can see now we have that depth of field blurring. Now we want to set the area that is in focus within the image. We have autofocus on, so as long as this is on, Octane is going to figure out what it thinks is the best place to keep in focus. And it's going to get frustrating because if we adjust the focal depth, we're not going to see an update. or It's not going to update the way that we want it to. So let's turn autofocus off. Of course, the whole thing gets blurry now. And uh, it's a little bit of a disaster. So let's tune down our aperture to say something like 20. And we can sit here and try and figure out what this value is. Or we can go into the live viewer, select this F button here, which will allow us to interactively pick the focus. So as long as this is highlighted, we can click in the scene and pick that area of focus. 
let's say something like this. So you'll notice as we adjust the aperture, the f-stop automatically adjusts as well. So these two settings are tied together. Let's set this to 20, just so we have a little bit of depth of field in there. Of course, it's going to make things look small, but that's OK. And down here, we have a number of settings that allow us to kind of define the quality of the blurring in our depth of field, our out of focus areas. So for example, we can change the aspect ratio. If I start to bring this up, it's going to kind of stretch that blurring. And we can also do things like if I change the rotation here, it's very noticeable when you increase that aspect ratio and say, let's bring the bokeh sound side count down to three. You can kind of see it almost looks like a smearing. And now when I do the rotation, you can see that that smearing will rotate as I move this around. So this is a bit of an extreme example, but we can play with the uh, aspect ratio, the aperture edge, and the bokeh sound, bokeh side count, bokeh rotation, and also play with the roundness. So all these are meant to fine tune the look of the blurry areas within the render. And then down below, we have things like pixel aspect ratio. Of course, you probably want to leave this at one for the most part, unless you're rendering something that is anamorphic or something like that. We have perspective correction, which can add a little bit of correction to the perspective. We have our near and far clip depth. So if I set this to like 20, it's going to clip the scene. Let's set this to 100 or 1000. I set it to 50,000. Of course, we lose our scene altogether. 5,000, we start to see the back of it coming in. 2,000, you can see there's the clipping right there. So you can see the pipe going through the floor. You get the idea. Clipping planes, kind of a standard option in all 3D packages. And then we have the far clip plane to adjust the back. And we can also add some lens distortion. Set this to orthographic and even shift the lens. That's probably too much. Let's try two. Let's try 0.2. Move back to zero. So those are the basic settings for working with uh, Octane Camera Tag in Octane for Cinema 4D.